Hello, you know it's clap. <laughs> Hello and uh, welcome to the In Between podcast. Make sure to use the code Peter Molyneux's forehead for fifty percent off all G two A purchases. Uh, not a guarantee. Not a guarantee. See in store for details while stocks last. Terms and conditions apply. And I'm joined here with Daniel uh, this week because it's a bi-weekly thing. Hi! Hi. We have the worst bi-weekly structure ever. Bi-weekly meaning sometimes, occasionally yeah, every other and, week. And uh, joined here, as usual, <clears throat> by Tony. Hey, that's me. And let's talk about some games. Games! Games. All right, I put Overwatch placements as the first thing. Did you play ranked? I did. Did you win? Um, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Yeah. I blame myself mostly because I wasn't in the best space when I actually played some of my places. You were matches. going through some things. I was going through some shit. I wouldn't recommend it. But um, it was okay until the last three matches. And then Blizzard just seemed to throw their matchmaking toys out the pram. Did you do it solo again? Uh, no, I did some with uh, some friends and some solo. To get, I always do that just as a mix because I find it more interesting to see how I stack up when I'm on my own genuinely playing compared to how mm. I'm actually getting you know carried with friends or whatever because obviously the dynamic's different when you is play with friends, right? Just carrying them, not just teamwork? Well, it is. that's what I mean. I, I was being facetious in a way, but I, I definitely put in um, probably the least of all of my friends like who actually play Overwatch frequently because mm. the only characters that I actually play to a D- good degree yeah. are basically D.Va and, and though she's good she's good in the meta right now she's Most, like broken in the yeah meta. kind of in a way she's, a, um, she's like a must pick in the meta yeah um, the other ones my friends play are usually like Zarya which is always must pick pretty much and um, well they've never nerfed Zarya yeah, in and her entire existence Mercy which is always a, fu- a funny one right and, but having a healer is just always a blue a boon. So well, she got buffed recently because <clears> of <throat> yeah. instead of healing after uh, being out of combat for three seconds. Just one second now the medic second. used to be without the blood salga or something like that. Oh no, that was like three health seconds. Anyway, tier two ran random moment over. But yes, I have played my Overwatch placement matches. I didn't place well. I placed in gold, um quite low in gold to be perfectly honest. It's like well it's not great. It's I know they had issues in the last um game, but I managed to Last season, I got up to 2,676, which I was pretty pleased with in Platinum. I thought well, that was they, okay, they right? did say this season more, more people, people would end up in gold, lower. Which, which makes sense, right? And I'm having fun at the moment trying to fight my way back up to get to Platinum, as I did last time, because mm. the kind of thrill of the chase and getting up to, say, that guarantee, I think it's 1,200 points for Platinum, or it's only 800 for gold or something like that. I can't remember how the tier ranking system works mm. for the skill rank points. At the I think it's it. like 800 in... Flat. Oh, it probably is, and then goes up to Grandmaster for twelve hundred. But something like that it doesn't really matter. Anyway, um, yeah. Oh, so don't I, you get like three thousand points for Grandmaster? You get like a free legend, a free golden weapon. I've got no idea. All I know is that I'm in the one that gives me some towards it. I've already got my D for golden gun, so I don't really mind. How much. You, did you just play a lot? I've actually got it here. It's you get free in Grandmaster. Yeah, yeah, two thousand for Master, twelve hundred for Diamond, and. It's actually a big jump between gold and yeah, gold. Yeah, it's pretty substantial. I mean, it's a that's a is that normal eight eight and eight is uh, mm-hmm. no, it's not not quite because it would have been sixteen hundred if it was diamond, but because it goes 100, 200, 400, 800, it should go sixteen hundred, but I don't know. Blessed logic, it goes to twelve hundred. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, uh, so I played through, and the last three games I played were all solo queue. Oh no, 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 not the last three. Played one game with a friend, and the last two were solo queue, and they were awful. The first one I played was um, I was against a full pre made, mm. um, and all of my team, uh, some of them were already ranked as gold, so you could see they weren't like above and whatever. Because yeah. Blizzard did this thing where they try to match you against, like, well, we value you working as a team more than we value your actual skill ranking in some cases, right? Um, and that just meant that we got waffle stumped because um, they, they were talking to each other, whereas the rest of my team were yeah, uh, naturally I, arguing with each other. They were eating. I found it I found, in one of my games. I was queued as five, and then the enemy team was a stack of six. Hmm. See that I understand, right? If it's like really waning and it can't put you in because it can't find another yeah. six of the equal one, fair enough. But this was two games on the bounce where it just seemed really unfair. The, the last game I played, it felt like I was playing with a bunch of chimps that just had like. Keyboards, no, tape. Everyone to their was feet. picking Winston. Pretty much, <laughs> they were like, it felt like they were trying to play the game using their feet. One guy just kept disconnecting over and over well, the again. Banana controls, and it just didn't end well. I, but uh, yeah. as we've discussed on the podcast before, 
if you don't do well, then it's because you didn't carry hard enough. So yeah. obviously I need to carry hard. Well, I was just like, if I just get plat, I can go FK for the whole season. Yeah, so pretty much. I just got plat. <laughs> and I was like, well, I don't need to play ranked anymore. I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm like, I'll have a golden weapon next season. So, um. so I did that. And then I had a, a very short break. Um, and then it was the Christmas update. And yeah, it was because really lovely. When, if we originally recorded this on Sunday, which it's not, it's Thursday, <laughs> we wouldn't have thought <laughs> yeah. about Christmas. No, we would not. Because it wouldn't, it wouldn't have, have existed happened. yet. It happened yesterday at about So like there's a lot. Clock, five, nine, eight, uh, nine, did you buy like a hundred loot boxes? Don't be ridiculous. I only bought 50. Okay. Um, but and I do now have... 50? Yeah. I, How yeah. much is that? Like 40 okay. quid? pound ninety nine. You bought the game... I, again, again. No, you buy fifty loot boxes I, I, every time because I got the game slightly discounted, down. so I bought the game. How twice did you get again. it discounted? Well, originally when it came out, it was only like twenty five. Did something? they up the price? I don't know. I can't remember. I don't think no, that someone should have paid for it. So I really just like, day day one like um. Uh, sale. I have no idea. I can't remember. I'm pretty sure I didn't pay full price for it or whatever. I may have made that up. Maybe someone else that got it for mm. cheap. But regardless. So yeah, I bought 50 loot boxes as soon as they announced the update, but we'll get on to what the actual skins are in a bit. Um, I'll talk about the um, the game mode updates which have happened first. So the first one is um, a, a May only brawl, which is quite interesting. Snowballs. It's, it's it's a snow brawl fight. That's amazing. It is. I, and I don't get it. Can you explain it? Right. No, so I get, I get uh, okay, it, I get it. okay, <laughs> just check. So uh, they have like May re Christmas as well as an one of our skins talking about puns. It's awful. Anyway, I love Blizzard. <laughs> Tony knows my love for Blizzard and puns. <laughs> yeah. They do it in every <clears throat> single game. They just shove as many puns in as possible. Yeah. I do so, appreciate it. So it being festive, they basically just went all out with May and said, right, okay, you're getting your own little um, game mode where you all have her endothermic blaster, but it's only got a single shot in it. Um, mm. It's like golden gun mode from uh, GoldenEye in a way, right? Well, Except a everybody has so got like a golden a gun. Projectile. Yeah, so you fire your uh, snowball out, and it, if it hits another enemy, then it's one hit kill. And then if you have fired your bullet, you have to then go round to these little like mounds of snow which kind of glow a bit around the map and reload, which is kind of dangerous because you have to stand there for a while sucking up the snow into your endothermic mm. blaster. And you still have your ultimate, but your ultimate's slightly different. Your... Have, have you played a lot of this game mode? Because there's achievements on it. Um, no, I didn't realize there's, a, there's achievements similar to the... The um, brawl about Halloween. The uh, Junkenstein's yeah. revenge. Because I've got... There's four of them, and I've got three so far. Mm. There's one for killing someone at 25 meters. Okay. There's one for killing three people. No, there's one for winning three rounds in a row without losing a single one. Yep. Uh, there's one for killing four people without missing a single shot. Oh, damn. One shot, one kill. Yeah, I've got that one. And then the final one is kill three people in a game that are reloading. <laughs> My favorite yeah. thing about the the uh, thing is it just goes on to show how evil Maya is. She's like, May. I'm putting a yeah, rock putting in a rock in this one, and then just whenever she's like reloading, like pat pat pat, pat just pat, like pat, pat. It, she's got really sweet voice lines, and then one of them is just literally, I'm going to fucking kill you. I'm putting a rock in this snowball. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh my god! Mate. Did, did you see how angry people got at Maya's legendary skin? Uh, what the Santa one? Why I didn't see that. Jeff Kaplan's put out a public statement saying that they're gonna change the skin. Why? What's wrong with it? People were saying it wasn't legendary material, it wasn't cool enough. Oh, okay. He hmm? said they're, they're going to make some cosmetic changes to Mai in January. I think it'd be May. You keep saying Mai, it really I don't know me. which one it it's is. It's May. It's one of the two. It's May. Because all of the other characters always say May. 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 Like the month. May. Well, let's move on and never okay. speak Why of this again. Why spelled weirdly then? Because it's not Honestly, English. <laughs> yeah. I think, I, think it, I think you say it May in Chinese, but if you were English, you'd say... My. No, because even if you did the literal Romanji translation, it would be M A I that you would say my, like my Valentine. No, I mean like, like the you a- do, right? M E I in English would be be May still. May, my. Like you may. My. Why you M E I? You say May, but you may. I don't. I always say it wrong. Oh, no. I always forget. Maybe which, this is the weep. I always for, I always forget which one's the real one. Because I've always, yeah, I always, the, you know, no, you know, yeah, scones yeah. and scones. Yeah, you say it. Enough, I forget which one's the real like, one. I've, I've interchanged them too much now. There's no coming back. From so this. Uh, I'll just. We so, got massively off topic. But sometimes I'll say something like, "Yeah, I, I shot May and I died as me, 
Maybe. <laughs> You've come up with another one. I don't remember. There's too many mays. Which one is it? There's May Mays and there's, there's, there's May. Mimi. Oh, that's how I remember it. She's a May May. Yeah, she's May. May's Bay. Anyway, okay. so 6v6, everyone's got the same one. When you use your ultimate, your little buddy that normally freezes everyone goes above you and just infinitely fills up your uh, ammo counter so you can yeah. fire as much as you like. So basically, what tends to happen is it gets to a point where the game stagnates and suddenly there's one round where everyone has their ult and just goes mm. completely, you know, bonkers. Um, you still have the, your access to your other abilities, so you still build walls. You can still um, cryo freeze. freeze, but obviously you won't have lost any health because you yeah, you should use health. them to just juke people. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I don't know if you've noticed as well. If you have the legendary skin for May, although they're saying you know Let it doesn't it look snow. good. The, no, the 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 legendary skin for snowman. May, um, yeah, when she turns into her ice block, she turns into a snowman, yeah. which is really quite cool. I think it's a really cool it's skin. It's huge as well. I like it. I don't why they changed? Why so, so have you seen the um, Zyra skin? Yeah. Uh, do you mean the skin? Oh, the frostbite one. Yeah, it's okay. Her no. legendary ult, uh, emote her is epic. the coolest. No, one no, no. Though. Have you seen her epic skin? Yeah. Have you seen how it's exactly the same as one of her other skins? Is it like, really? Indifferentiable from her. She's other got like skin. blue hair. I guess that's. No, she reason. doesn't. She has pink hair. Does she really? Have, I can show you a picture of it. Okay, you Google this. So I'll go through the other bits and pieces. So that, anyway, that's the game mode. It's six v six, best of three. Um, it's okay, but I don't think it'll have too much replayability because it's not that interesting. Oh, I should say it's also set on uh, Eco Point Antarctica, which is the one the which was updated for three v three. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's it's okay. It's 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 fun. Um, I I don't think it will get played again that much, like I said. But yeah, we'll see. Only, um, only every Christmas. Yeah. The interesting like thing it. that they actually did. Yeah, I've downloaded this. That they actually did is um, keep that open for a sec. I'll go through all of the legendary skins that they added. So they have a Jingle Bell Tracer, which is her dressed like an elf. Oh, I really want that skin. They have um, May Remay, which is her as Santa. The Nutcracker Zenyatta skin, which one. was the first one I opened in the first box. I got like you know get free one. Got, and I was like, oh, I got Frost yes. Zarya, the off the worst skin yeah. the Blizzard's ever made. Why do they hate Zarya's skin? I don't know. They just don't like her, like, making her look cool. I mean, the Weightlifter one was okay from like the summer games. Yeah, that was her only good the one. Only good one. And you had to get the right one, otherwise. I, re- I, I think Trace has the most legendary skins in the game now. <sighs> Probably. Winston finally gets a uh, another skin. legendary skin. My boy skin, Winston. They didn't forget about him. Yeti Winston, and that is very Ooh. cool. He's, he replaces his jetpack with two skull heads. Mm. I've got that one. It's pretty cool. Um, do you see the scary thing is hold on well, and the last one they've got is Santa Clad Torbjorn which is Torbjorn dressed as Santa with two Christmas trees on his back with a reindeer turret yeah do you see how Winston's got the Yeti skin and then May my, yeah, yeah with her boots. Yeti hunter <laughs> it's just quaking your boots a little bit there but I really want the Tracer one because when she dashes she goes dashing through the snow does she really yes oh I didn't unlock that it was a toss up for me after I after I bought all of them I had enough to buy basically all the ones I wanted bar one legendary yeah. I was like do I want Yeti Winston or Jingle Tracer it, and I instantly just click Yeti Winston because it, Winston has the pe- skin. People now, were right? the most upset that um, they didn't make a uh, bad sweater soldier. Yeah, they did. People did say that. Like, um, I, I'm always a bit miffed when Diva doesn't get any cool literature because she's got her initial ones and that's about it, right? She's not had one for ages. They, she's got a, a victory pose, which is her mech she's covered got in her um, legendary fairy lights. She, yeah, she does have emote. a legendary emote, which I guess is kind of cool. Um, but Blizzard embracing Gremlin Diva law. Yeah, pretty much. And they've done something sort of similar with a legendary emote this time around as well. So Zarya. this time around, Zarya. So did I say Zarya, Zarya. I think it's actually pronounced. Zarya, I thought. It's 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 pronounced um, Zyra in Russian. Zyra? Oh, okay, maybe. I guess so. It's probably. But written in it confuses original. me because there's a League of Legends character called Zyra, so I just say Zarya. Oh, okay. Anyway, Zarya, as I'm going to keep calling her, is um, has got a mystery gift. Uh, em- emote, which will cost you the same as it would a uh, limited time legendary, so 3,000 gold. Yeah. But in it, she has a gift which she opens, uh, and one of three things can come out. She can either reveal one of those old, like, 60s walking robots, which it. she will crush instantly, because obviously she hates Omnics. Um, she will either get out a teddy bear, which she will hug, and hug so tightly that she will make the head pop off. Yeah. Uh, or alternatively, she will open a box containing a box, which will have a box, which will contain a box, which will have a box, which will contain a box, and it goes on for about six times before eventually she just throws the box away. <laughs> which is pretty cool, but um, it's for Zarya, so no one cares. Yeah. It's because. Oh, yeah, wow. people, my friend Alban's a Zarya man. He has like the golden Zarya. Yeah, account. but I mean, like, I, I think for the most part, most people, if they play this game, will 
spend all of their hard-earned credits on skins. Because let's face it, although some of the emotes are called at the beginning of the game, apart from that, you never see them. Well, I think I think Blizzard knows. Okay, people want people are going to buy tracer why, skins. That's why the price people are going to buy like Winston skins. Yeah. People are going to buy Santa Torbjorn. That's going to sell well. Yeah, pretty much. And the other update that has been done to this is apart from all of these different. Um, Various uh, winter maps. Yeah, there's, there's, some of the maps have been a bit snowified. Is what call some of them. Some of them are way more updated than others. Like Hanamore actually has quite a few like um, snow in the Zen Gardens. There's fairy lights everywhere. I find it, it pretty cool. weird though. Kings Row, they, same. They chose one of the worst maps in the game to put snow on, and then didn't change anything about it. What balance wise? Hanna, oh yeah. Well, I mean that that makes sense to a degree. I think you would probably want to set your team doing one thing to the map at a time. You wouldn't want to do both at the same time. So I don't go. Well, this is completely broken, yeah. and it looks weird as well. Um, <clears throat> and I'm not entirely sure, but I think they may have done Volskaya Industries as well. But it's always snowing there anyway. No, they haven't right? done it. It's, it's the same. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. But um, yeah. So this isn't anything I want. Wonder. I don't know. Is We're looking up then? Zaya. Because uh, we wanted pictures of her, but whatever. Anyway, so. Tony will get the picture. Pretty sure that's all of the updates yeah. they really made with the Christmas update. Oh, that's the coolest thing as well. On um, King's Row, the uh, <laughs> the normal cart is replaced with Santa's sleigh. So yeah, you push Santa's cool. sleigh, which is pretty awesome. Is it just me? Is it in the train station? You can hear. Like, you can hear. You like can, a yeah, you train. can. I cannot see it. I have no idea where it is, but I have looked for it. I'm sure it must be there. Oh, and on the title screen as well. Oh, that's right. Um, um, McCree gets a pretty cool... Uh, oh, you haven't mentioned probably skin. the biggest change in this patch. The Stay as a Team feature. Oh, yeah. I mean, have oh, you used that's it? Because, yeah, because I used it when it was on the PTR, because uh, I didn't know what it yeah. did, and then I actually read the words above it. It was like, Stay as a Team. I was like, oh, okay. So, yeah, now when you finish either a competitive game or if any game mode, I think, you can basically mm. click the stay as a team button. If six out of six people on the team say, yeah, they want to stay together, when you start the next game, the teams won't be shuffled as they were in the previous one. You will be with the same people you played with last time, which is a pretty cool feature. I know that um, I I think some people were asking for this because mostly it was the, the people you meet when you do stupid stuff and quick play and you're like, do you want to stay as a team? Yeah, cool, why not? But Yeah, I thought it was really cool. Mm. I, used, I played like a couple of snowball fights and I played with some people and then they went off and I didn't see them again I didn't because I, I like play, I like playing a couple more games with people but I don't necessarily want to add them to my yeah, yeah I know what you mean it's, it's cool it's uh, the amount of times you go into a server you say something stupid like you just constantly spam stuff over like the mic or whatever and then you get these like friend requests just suddenly start popping up hmm. in your bottom right hand corner is is a, is a, is a good feeling at the same time you're like but I'm not going to add these people because I will never play with them again I don't actually care that they found me funny that one time <laughs> And I don't think they did much else. I mean, they've actually changed some of the like voice lines and stuff now. So Winston's um, scuba diving ones, he'll say splashing down when he lands. Um, but apart from that, it's not too much. Oh, yeah, Scrooge McCree as well. He's yeah. pretty cool. He's got like a proper stovepipe hat. There's a couple of corner mates and stuff. Yeah. Oh, and Rudolph, uh, I forgot about him, Rudolph uh, Roadhog. And... I felt a lot A lot of the epic ones are really lazy, they were just recolours. They are to a degree, but I mean, they're, they're better than them having nothing, right? I mean, that's the point of the, it, you can't the, have them be the, really the, awesome. The because... Roadhog one was a good epic. I like that one. I like Reaper's one actually, even though it's just another Reapers kind of good. recolour. But it, it, Reaper's ones always look good whenever you redo them, because he's just one of those characters that has colour coming out of him in a weird way. Look at this. Yeah, that is. Oh, that is literally the same. But if you that she has another skin called Dawn, which is literally this, but without the sleeves. That's kind of dumb. And that's an epic skin. Yeah, you feel a bit cheated getting that. Yeah, I mean, I I thought that was like by far the worst skin they made. That was like, kind of annoying. Mm. But anyway, we should probably move on from yeah. Overwatch. Tony, cut your back. You're back in the what? room. Oh, my cup of tea. Put it down. Oh, what, what year is it? So yeah, we talked about more Overwatch than I thought we were because we had the Christmas fair update. Few changes. Oh yeah, so last week you said I was going to watch Danny Die. Who do you think you are? It was fucking amazing, Tony. When well, you said it was actually amazing, was it actually? It was amazing. Yeah, it was really good. Who is he descended from? Mongol hordes. He is a direct descendant of the Earl of Essex. Okay. And uh, who was it? It was um, was it Edward oh. the Third? Yeah. Is that one He's of actual the... direct descendant of royalty. That does not surprise me. 
<laughs> Danny Why Dyer. Does that surprise he you? goes to visit one of his relatives, and this guy's in like this castle. He's like, "Oh, this geezer's got fucking drawbridge." <laughs> People aren't pe- fans. <coughs> fans of the show are saying this is probably the best. Who do you think you are? There's ever been. Mm. It was really good. Just because there's so diverse characters. I mean, that's that's why I was saying it doesn't surprise me that he's related to Roy. It's sort of like really f- really sad as well. Like, it's like but it's not like not like really it's not like he's like a a super distant relative. He's like. Direct descendant. Yeah, I would. I'd find it interesting to see if they approach other celebrities. Say they did it with I don't know. Let's say <laughs> Richard Hammond. It turns out that he goes back to like just a family of pig farmers, and it's like this mm. is really not very interesting. Didn't even fight during the war. They cowered. They just well, sat it, there. Danny started from like he came from nothing. He yeah. came from nothing. That's yeah. what he says. He's, He's like, like um, Alan Sugar. I started by selling and flogging stuff at the back of a van. And that's where I am now. I don't know. But his family was very poor. Yeah. But then he had like a French relative. And then that went back to some royalty. Mm. As is tradition. Anyway, I played Batman Telltale Episode 2. That's my copy, which I have. I did not know I owned. So <laughs> so Joe came downstairs and he was just like, are you going to play on Steam tonight? And I was like, no, probably not. Why? And he's just like, oh, I thought you might be playing Batman. And I was like, why would I be playing Batman? I've already played it. It's like, no, no, the new ones are out. And I'm like, I own those? So apparently I must have bought the season pass or something and not even realised it. Well, so done, I've not played these. I think they may have released episode five. Five recently. is out like recently. I just saw they, it today. They just did like a two gigabyte update because they're, they're doing more performance uh, tweaks, which oh, cool. are needed because when I was playing the second one, there was multiple stuttering points. Mm. It's not very well optimised in terms of... You know, sometimes Batman will just start tilting his head completely the wrong way and <laughs> glitching out in that classic old Telltale engine that they've yet to actually move out of yeah. and actually move into a new one. They actually gave away um, season one and two of um, The Walking, Walking Dead. Dead on Twitch Prime. So I've got both oh, that's of those. cool. Why do, how do you have Twitch Prime? Uh, so the other week, this is kind of funny because we were talking about Twitch and Amazon have done this massive deal where if you have Amazon Prime, you mm. now get Twitch Prime. Yeah. And I completely forgot Amazon owns Twitch. Yeah. So it, it's it wasn't... Completely relevant. But yeah. why do you have it? Or how do you have it? Because we have Amazon Prime. Yeah, but I couldn't do it. When I signed and linked mine two together, it didn't work. I have it linked to our Amazon Prime account. Oh, so you're basically hoarding it for yourself. I mean, do you need it? I mean, I was going to use it for the free subs. I, 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 I watch Twitch, though. <laughs> I use the free Ooh, subs. Okay, this is yeah, my revelation. I feel like Joe uses Twitch way more. Well, you wouldn't know, Tony. You don't live here. You don't know me. Oh, uh, you want okay, okay. to? I subbed to Rex for a month, if you use and it. then I subscribed to Disguise Toast, and I was going to subscribe to Tice. There's some half There's some streamers. people. Yeah, okay, you probably would use it more. So do you get <laughs> games as well? I didn't realize it. I mean, I knew it well, said you get goodies you, every week. You, I was like, oh, yeah, but you probably wouldn't use them. They're not Steam codes. Oh, Twitch right. has their own. You have to download like a Twitch launcher, and then you launch them through. Really? Yeah. It's probably it's the they've given there's they so they start with Punch Club and, um, this War of Mine. Oh, there was a Hearthstone skin, as well. Yeah, you would really benefit a lot more than this than I would. Never mind. All is forgiven. And I no then, longer care. Then they just did um the Walking Dead season one two, and I was like, oh, I've been playing Telltale games. I'll try those out. They're pretty good. I know, it's getting yeah. good reviews. She, but she liked episode them. two is really cool because there's this part, not really a spoiler. <laughs> You're going to have to add in the Peter Molyneux over time I cough again. Yeah. Oh, no. It's back. So th- th- there's a part in episode two where you're with Catwoman and it's like, do you kiss Catwoman? I'm like, come on. Do you come- <laughs> is that even a question? Is that even a question? There's a choice if you, if you choose to kiss Catwoman or not. And then at the end it shows statistics like, 80% of people chose to kiss Catwoman <laughs> at this point. I, was like, I thought that was pretty funny. I I, always, I found it quite interesting that it does the stats at the end. When I played yeah. it through, it was fairly, fairly, relatively early when it actually mm. came out, right? And it shows you all the stats people picked. And most of my choices are like lined up with everybody else's. But when it got to the end where it's like, did you play as edgy Batman or did you play as like old classic never hurt anyone Batman? Mm. It was like 50-50 split. I was like, how can all of the choices be so similar but then the other bit be 50-50? Mm. It doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. So I question the stats engine. So you know, Batman tells her, it's, it's actually quite dark. Because mm. I was just like, oh yeah, it's like a comic. It's like the comic book. No one ever died. Loads of people just get randomly killed. And you're just like, wait, that's a main character. What the fuck just happened? Yeah. You're just like, what? You're just going to kill them off straight there. Just He's just got shot in the head. He's dead. Goodbye. 
I was like, whoa. It's not important, Joe. Not no, important. They're just killing the main, off characters, main right? characters. And I was like, shit, my my act- my actions actually have consequences. Some kind of consequences, yeah. But I'm just like, and, th- and I'm torn now because I'm trying to bang Catwoman and this reporter <laughs> woman. It's like it's like how I imagine I actually, play Mass you're not, Effect. You're not even actually playing... Um... Batman. I'm playing, playing a Bruce Wayne simulator, simulator. <laughs> instead. Like, if Bruce Wayne actually acted like Bruce Wayne rather than a rubbish Batman Playboy wannabe, you would be playing that. Well, it's just it's just I, a face, really. It's, isn't it's, it? I'm actually really into it. It's like I need to be tough but fair with Alfred, right? He needs to know his place, <laughs> but I don't want to be too hard on him. Yeah, because I like the guy. He's like a father figure to me, but you did hide <laughs> that shit from me, Alfred. So you, you know, I'm going a little bit hard on you. You know, but um. Yeah, I actually I actually find the Bruce Wayne sections really fun. You find them like better than I don't think the Batman I d- stuff? No, I don't I don't know. I'd like the detective stuff you can do. I think this is one yeah. of the better Telltale games because there's a lot more detective stuff and it makes sense. And it for me when I played the first one it was better than the detective mode like in the Arkham games where right? mm. we just oh, actually press they're, they're X to know way. everything and see everything in a nice shiny color like okay they, they never worked that well for me. They were like, yeah. you have to go and find this item. You're like, okay, I press X, you can turn going X ray, You can turn X-ray mode on when you want extra information. It's like, why do I ever turn X-ray mode off? Yeah, exactly. But um, I think it. I don't think I've ever seen a game do Bruce Wayne sections of Batman as well as the Telltale does. Mm. I think it's... Definitely check this one out. It's pretty good. So I've also <laughs> been playing Battle Block Theater, which is a game. It is a game. I've it's made Battle by Castle Theater. Crashers. I've played Battle Block Theatre. Have you played through the co-op? Uh, not played through it, but I played certain levels. It's like one of those games where I thought, oh, I'll get this because like Gil ran in. Yeah. I was like, we'll play this all the time. And then I played like twice and they actually completed it because I never had time. Yeah. So. Well, I've been, I, was, I was playing through the co-op again and I, th- I thought it was pretty fun. It reminds me a lot of the Portal 2 co-op where you're always killing each other. <laughs> yeah. It's the same sort of thing as Castle Crashers as well. It's mm. it's very similar, but you can you can tell when you play it. See, I didn't like different. Castle Crashers that Neither much. Neither did but I. To I be prefer Battle Block Theatre a lot more. It's a lot more. F- it's you still it's, have it's humor the It's there. the mini games afterwards as well. I think that had quite a lot to them. Like mm. the actual different modes that you can play when you're playing multiplayer are quite fun. A bit like Duck Game in a way. So I'll just go to the next because I played a lot of stuff. Uh, I played the Australia Stress Test OV. Yeah. Then Australia Wow Private Server. Is that everyone's been thing? hyping up. It well, it was a level sixty stress test. So you go. Okay. I have some footage of this, but you go to um, Ogrimmar or Stormwind, wherever you're starting out, and then there's giant NPCs that like boost you to level sixty and give you all your gear and stuff. So you can. They wanted you to test out like the level sixty combat to see mm. how it was. Okay, okay. So this is a proper stressing of all all features yeah. and things. It seemed to run pretty smooth. I think they're going to have to cap the amount of people coming on because there was a lot of people on. I think when I was on, there was around 10,000 people on or something. It was crazy for a private server. Mm. Yeah. They, they, they've already said they're probably going to have to cap it, but they've announced on the 17th they're going to be releasing... <coughs> they're, they're moving the old data from the Nostralius to the Elysium servers. Oh, so it will actually retain some stuff. Oh, well, that's yeah. cool. They Nostralius gave them basically the keys to the kingdom. They said, "We're giving you the code. We're giving you all the old accounts, and then now you can transfer them over to the PvP and the PVE Nostralius servers on Elysium." Some of the admins as well. Yeah. yeah, and then the the fresh servers, the ones where you start anew, are coming in January. Hmm. So that was interesting. Uh, and the final game I played this week was a super surprise game because I did not expect to be playing this at all. So I was going through my Steam Creator crew, my Steam Creator queue, and I found this game called Book of Demons, and it was kind of this action RPG kind of uh, Diablo-esque game. And I looked at it, and I was watching the videos, and I was like, it looks kind of interesting. It's like Papercraft. So it had this really nice art style, but I was like, I'm not sure about the combat because the combat is just clicking. Like, you click to attack... And you click to move, and I was like, I'm not sure, but I read some reviews, and it said, um, "Don't be put off by the." It said, y- "You should try the demo because the video does not represent the gameplay. You need to play it to understand how actually complex the gameplay is." And mm-hmm. I was like, "Okay, well, I like games with demos. So if a game's got a demo, yeah, I'll try it out." Really. And I tried the demo, and it was fantastic. Now it's the top of your wish list, right? It's, yeah, it's the top of my wish list. Now. It's that good. I fucking loved it. The demo is about is 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 well like two hours long. Oh, right. Um, it's a it's, say, it's, well it's a Polish company. Mm. 
because when you start the game, it goes, do you want to play the game in English or Polish? <laughs> and I was like, well... I don't speak one of I these languages. I don't speak Polish, but it's, it, it would appear that you are a Polish company if you've got it all in Polish. And I was like, what is Glory it? To our what is it? What is it with po- Polish uh, game developers making good RPGs? I was like, you got CJ Project Red yeah. and the Book of Demons, and I was like, well, it's because they've got they, so much lore doing to draw from as well. But yeah, it has it has some really interesting card based um, equipment mm. where as you. You can put like uh, items, like health potions, because mm. you can only hold a certain amount of cards. Mm. And then you have like magic, so you can have spells. And then you have artifacts, which give you bonuses. Like they'll give you like block and stuff, and they'll let you walk through fire on like boots and stuff. But artifacts limit your mana, mm. so you kind of you kind of have to mix and match between these traits. It's so that's a, it's a really interesting way to do it. Um, but yeah, yeah. sounds way better than something like how Skyrim does it. If if yeah. you are a fan of <coughs> ARPGs or Diablo, download the demo and try this game. It's fantastic. Yeah, I haven't I played really it. I enjoyed it. Demo. Isn't that the you're going you're going down to hell, aren't you? Yeah, the, so it's kind of like the Diablo story where you're going down into the church and you're going down to trying to get down to um, hell and kill the devil. <laughs> I think it, it is very. It's kind of like a. It's almost like a parody of Diablo. How they they're drawing a lot from it because the first boss, he isn't the butcher. He's the cook, mm. sort of thing. So similar weapons, I guess. Yeah, similar. But it's all papercraft, and it's this really nice aesthetic. I'll get it up yeah, for not, Daniel. So I'm not normally a big fan of papercraft, but this actually looks quite good even to me. Hmm. One yeah, of the most no, I... interesting things is every time you go into the dungeon, it asks you how long you want to play for. Oh yeah, and um, based on how long you want to play for, is it'll make it harder, oh, or cool. um, and it, the the harder you go, the more rewards you get. So if you go for a longer, harder one, you get uh, more gold and more uh, XP. I think that is an interesting aesthetic. I quite like that. Kind of almost voxel, but so you see the enemy with a shield, you have to click the shield to yeah. destroy it, and that sort of stuff. It's been getting quite good reviews. There's kind of a deck builder as well. It's weird. It's cool. Yeah, it's really cool. I was not expecting to like it because I, whenever I play an ARPG, I'm like, I, I don't really care as long as the core combat loop is really fun. Because you need a really good combat loop for these kind of games. And I was like, well, if it's a clicker, yes. yeah, it's I'm not really gonna in... like it. Yeah. But it was actually fantastic. I was blown away by how much fun this game was. I wanted to play more. I still, I'm still yet to understand like how the clicking is so good, but I do trust your your opinion, yeah. Joe. So well, I it's in early access the at the moment, the actually. Games. In the demo, you can only play as the warrior. They've just released the mage, and I think they're planning on making a rogue class as well. Mm. But there's already like a hardcore mode where if your character dies, you can delete it. So I, I, I'd love to try that sort of stuff out. I always play hardcore oh, on Diablo. Mm. Wasn't that um, a really cool like loot system? With, like, yeah, so like every a... time you level up, you get to put one point into your health and one point into your mana. And then every time you, you put one into one, so I t- say I take health, it puts the mana into the potion, into like this cauldron, and it saves it there. And then when... Um, uh, then you get it all... You get this cauldron back in town. And you also get rare materials and special items in there when you kill bosses. And when you die, this potion gets destroyed. So you have to go back to town and buy the contents to get the extra mana and stuff. Mm. But the more times you buy it, the more expensive it becomes. So you're kind of balancing between uh, not wanting to die and lose everything in your cauldron, but you're not wanting to buy it too many times because then it becomes more and more expensive. Yeah. And it creates this really interesting... Uh, Rock exchange. This gameplay between wanting to secure your rewards while um, making sure it's not too expensive to buy them. It's like um, one of the only interesting things I thought about the division, which was like you have to go in here and get loot, but then you have to actually get it out of the area, and mm. everyone's going to know you're trying to get out of the area, and then everyone. Will My friend was playing the division, and, and he said it got an update recently, and it was quite good. Oh. They, they added yeah, more yeah, like Diablo that... style loot. Yeah, it's like the total biscuit thing is talk about. So he's I, about I haven't like the, actually seen anything about it, but I heard but it. I did like a standalone. It's not really standalone, but you, you have to be in the game store. But like you, you start off from nothing. Like your your character's level doesn't do anything. You go into it, and it's like a complete experience in like a couple of hours. You then do it again and again. Interesting. Okay. You have to like so, actually fight the elements, like the cold. But 
So we'll talk about the board game now, because I've taken up a lot of time talking about my game. So. <laughs> Wait, uh, did Tony play oh it? shit! I can't talk about oh, Space Invaders again. No, no, you can't. You you wanted to talk <laughs> about Stellaris, didn't you? No, no, I didn't. That's time, don't okay. worry. Okay, so we're going to talk about the expansion for Coup. So we talked about Coup on the podcast before. I shall give you a very uh, brief reminder. There are five different types of character. There are three um, cards which represent um, that character in a deck. Uh, you are given two of those cards. Uh, face down and only you know what they are each of the different characters has a different action it can do the object of the game is to eliminate the other players and be the last man standing you do this by paying some money which you get you start off with two coins and some of the actions allow you to take coins some are blockable some aren't um if you want to know more about this rather than me going through it again go and look at our previous podcast where we have talked about coup um well, i Andy would recommend would call it coup. coup yes <laughs> <coughs> Oh, dear me. It is, the, <coughs> it is the French spelling. School's name. Anyway, um, so, and, and I really would recommend watching that first because otherwise what I'm about to say will not make sense. So, you know how everyone bullshits having the ambassador? Yeah. The ambassador is not in Coup Inquisition. Oh, he is replaced with the Inquisitor. And the Inquisitor has um, uh, the ability to draw. I'm going to get this up on the screen actually, thinking about it. If you put in. Coup Inquisition, uh, not Coup Inquisition. Yeah, Coup Inquisition rules. Uh, the, the it's okay. We'll stall for time in the meantime because my nose is running. There we go. Da, 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 da. So the Inquisitor replaces the Ambassador, um, and in the, the, he says something similar to the Ambassador's ability, which allows them to look at um, a card in the deck, uh, but only a single card then look at the other two cards they're holding and choose to replace one of their cards with the card they drew or put the same card back and then shuffle the deck. Or alternatively, and this is the interesting bit, you can look at someone else around the table's card. I think so, I've played this. So they have to show it to you. Um, and then... no, It's kind of like Love Letter, right? Um, but No, I think I've played the expansion. I remember the Inquisitor. Interesting. So anyway, you, the, the, and um, when you look at another player's card... Either um, they look at it and then you just make them keep it, or you can force them to change it for another card. So, obviously, you no longer know what they have, but you know they don't have what they had before, so they mm. may have to change their tactic. Um, so it's an interesting dynamic. Um, the other more core concept to the game um, is that you're no longer just all against all. You start off on teams, so it starts off with the first person, and uh, they pick whether they want to be a loyalist or um, a rebel, I think it is, something mm. like that. And it goes around the table, basically, it goes loyalist, rebel, loyalist, rebel, loyalist, rebel, or rebel, loyalist, rebel, loyalist. So you, there's always a gap between each one to start with. You also get another card which represents the treasury. Yeah. Uh, and you get two new actions you can use, which is pay one of your money to change your own faction to be the other one. Uh, or alternatively, you can pay two of your money, and they go in the treasury rather than into the uh, general like dead area or whatever, yeah. to change someone else's team. And the reason you might want to do this is because you cannot attack someone who is on your team. Uh, the only exception to this rule being that if everyone is on the same team, nobody's on the same team. It's basically a free-for-all game. So you can do stuff like uh, be a dick to someone the first time, and they'll think, I'll get you like when I've actually got some money to do this, and then protect yourself by saying, I pay one coin to the treasury, and... Uh, I'm on the diff I'm on the same team as you. So you can't attack me anymore. It's when you win the game. Is it team based or? <coughs> nope. It's always it. Based. It comes down to when it's two v two, and basically at that point, um, it's it doesn't matter about uh, factions anymore, right? Mm. Because you can uh, if if two people are on the same team, it's like they're not on the same team um, when they're the only ones in the game. And if they're on different teams, again the rules are the same. Yeah. There are a few rules about this. You can't attack someone who is um, not on. Uh, uh, who is on the same team as you but you can challenge someone on your team so if i said i am going to take three coins as a duke and you're on my team you yeah, can still say you're challenge. not the duke yeah and at that point i would have to reveal the cards so that makes an interesting dynamic and you know how previously the duke was pretty powerful to take three yeah. coins that treasury i was talking about before there's a new action that everyone can do uh that cannot be blocked which is embezzle those funds so there's this small pile of money that suddenly grows when people have been changing teams. You just say, I'm going to embezzle those funds. 
as not the Duke, because the Duke is the only person who can't do it. So if you try and do it as the Duke and someone says, I think you're the Duke, then you have to reveal that. There's no point to lie on this one, though, is Mm -hmm. there? Yeah, of course there is, because you might still be sat there with two um, contestants. Oh, I guess, because you could say, oh, I do it as the assassin, and then people know that you have the assassin, or you could be lying to not tell people what you have. Exactly. So it it gives another element of jeopardy to having the Duke, which previously was like a pretty strong card to have. Hmm. So it's it's really interesting. Um, it also makes the game last a bit longer, and I think it adds more cards as well. So uh, you can basically expand coup up to ten people now with uh, the oh, uh, yeah the extra cards really? that you get. Um, okay. And that was one of the coup's problems before. Is you could only play it with a certain number of people because there were only a limited number of cards. But yeah, now it expands to ten, which is pretty cool. It's it's good fun. It's it's a it sounds way better. Yeah, it's it's oh, an interesting. Mechanics. Um, way to change up the game so that it's still really easy to explain it. Yeah. But um, it just it's different enough that it keeps it interesting. Yeah. Well, no. The team based stuff at the start sounds pretty good. Have you I'm been sold, sold on the Kerr expansion, Tony? Uh, yeah, I'm sold. We should play You're on the sold. Tabletop simulator. Well, does it, is it on tabletop? Simulator? I'm not sure actually. The original Q so. is. I think um, Q Inquisition is. If I, it may not even be called Q Inquisition. <laughs> I'll look it up. Uh, don't put tabletop in. Put Coup Inquisition first, because I'm not even sure it's that. It could be Coup... Uh, what? Just put in Coup Expansion, in fact, because that's... <laughs> Imagine... Is it Rebellion? Oh, Reformation. That's the name. It's Coup Reformation. Is it Re- Rebellion? No, because Rebellion's a different... Um, that's a different one. I think. Yeah, Coup's a different one. That's the one set in a different universe. It's, it's the well, same universe, but like it's set in the future, different art style, whatever. I'm Coup awesome Reformation, if you change that. No, uh, well, they're set in other. It's weird. Reformation. Reformation, yeah. It's Reformation, but it's, that's what it's pronounced. Yeah, there you go. So it can then support up to 10 no, players. You've just been lying to time. everyone what the expansion's called. <laughs> no, that's fine. They now know. Because oh, they, have, they've been I'll good, the they've watched to the end. Won't be a problem. It Just also changes some of the card art of the um, different characters as well, which is pretty cool. So you're not just stuck with the same characters over and over again. But Duke looks the same to me. Uh, he does there, but he doesn't on these other ones. You just have different art. Yeah, they do the same job, but yeah, that's that's Coup Reformation. That looks lit. It sounds really good. I might get it. At Christmas, I'm because I don't actually own Coup. It belongs to one of our friends, and I might get. We Coup should talk and about that. the board game Katie got, Santa vs. Jesus. We need to play it first. We'll play it after <laughs> we've. Sorry. we've um, There's a board game called Santa vs. Jesus. Yeah, right? our sister has bought this board game called Santa vs. Jesus. We know nothing about. Oh, pardon me. We know nothing saw, about I've, it. I've seen it around her house. I've seen some of the cards. I've I've actually seen the box. I've learned nothing about it. I want to go into it blind. And Mum's going on me. Team Jesus, and I'm going on Team Santa. I'll be Team Santa. Okay. The girls can be Team <laughs> Jesus. Baby Jesus. And with that, um, Daniel's gone. Peace out, yo. Drop the mic. Don't do that. That's expensive. You bought it. I did. Did and you I break do whatever that? I like. Did I break what? Is it? Yeah. No, it's still recording. You smacked the mic. <laughs> Wait for the reviews. See? All right. Bye! So, PlayStation Experience was... Oh, I can't remember how long it was ago now, but it was a couple of weeks ago where it was around was the time... Even a bit ago? It was around the time of the Video Game Awards as well. So, yeah. that was that. But they have, like, this press conference kind of thing where they show off a bunch of new PlayStation trailers. So we'll just talk about those. So the first one was the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy, which it was teased at E3. It was E3. And we talked about that quite briefly when it was. But they've actually shown quite a lot of gameplay now. Or, you know, like a minute and a half of actual in-game footage of the um, the new game. So it actually looks really good. Have you, have you watched the trailer? I think I sent it to you. Yeah, yeah, I think I've watched it. It does legitimately look really so good. So it look it it's not like uh the the normal H D remakes where they just kind of slightly update the voxels and the pixels. No, it's no. an actual full remake similar to the Ratchet and Clank one. Which I think is fantastic. I, I always like when they re- put effort re- in. Yeah, they put the effort and they remake just it in like a engine. new engine and yeah. actually fix a lot of stuff or uh, you know, fix some bugs maybe, but yeah. yeah. I thought that, that was pretty cool that they remade the the whole trilogy of uh, 
Crash Bandicoot. And I'd be excited to play a lot of these games if it weren't for the fact I don't own a PS4. Yeah, I've got so... There's loads of games coming out of the PS4 that I actually want to play. Um, uh, well, we want to play the new Ratchet and Clank game. Yeah, yeah. Want to play some Uncharted stuff. Uh, we try money Last together. That's that's that should be, we should do. We can combine power. We can get a PS4. Can we, make, we start a Kickstarter. So we can buy a PS4. Right next week, guys, we'll have a Kickstarter ready <laughs> to kickstart the, the in between podcast PlayStation Four and Nintendo yeah, Switch. We, we need a Nintendo doesn't, doesn't Switch as well. We're gonna kickstart. That. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. We need we need to get our garden parties up as well. Yeah. So the next game, uh, Death Stranding. They released the second trailer for Death Stranding. Are I'm you more, more con- I'm more confused than the first one. So well, Kojima's good. been Kojima's been smoking something when he was making this game, right? What, what what's going on? What's with the babies? I don't get it. So they've got the legendary monster director Del Toro, 3D scanned into the trailer, and he's holding a baby. And then Mad Mix Mickelson, I, I'm gonna butcher his name, but yeah. he's in it as well, and he's so, kind of being absorbed by black goo or something. So Jim Sterling older was not him. It was yeah. It was when I else. saw Del Toro, I was like, "That looks like Jim <laughs> Sterling." I was very confused what Jim Sterling was doing in in uh, <laughs> Kojima's video game, but it actually makes a lot more sense that they're casting Mad uh, Mickelson in the uh, in this game because I, I I followed Kojima on Twitter and he was posting mm. a bunch of Hannibal stuff, which is, of course Mad's in. And I was like, yeah. Kojima's just obsessed with Hannibal or something. He's buying all this Hannibal merch, He's ha- been ha- Hannibal it. merchandise and stuff. And I was like, oh okay. After I saw his trailer, I was like, okay, that makes a lot more sense now. He's he has him in his game because I was watching an interview with Mad's and he said he 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 doesn't quite understand himself what it's about, but that's how he knows Kojima's smart. <laughs> That's how he knows Kojima knows what he's doing because not even he understands what's going on. Wow. So, I guess we've got to have a little. Kojima is crazy. We know that for a fact. Much right? like we've Bethesda wants us to have, we just got to have a little faith. Uh, they won't release shitty games. We j- the, no reviews. Just have a little faith. That's all uh, you need, Joe. What's the problem? So Del Toro is three D scanned in this game, but he's not acting. Someone else no. is going to be playing the three D scan model of Del Toro. Could he not is... just be like an NPC or something, though, or just like um, a Well, thing, he said... We don't, we don't know. Kojima said he talked with Del Toro, and they basically agreed that if Del Toro got involved, he would try and take over the project, and they'd, they'd, they'd cross wires too much, and uh, okay. he said it wouldn't have been too good. So it seems like... So he's confirmed Norman Reese is like the main protagonist. He's going to be the main mm. character you play as, and then Mad is going to be the... Your main enemy, your antagonist. You're right, okay. So another thing they confirm with this is it's confirmed to be in the uh, Decima engine, which is an upgraded version of the Horizon Zero Dawn engine, which also had a new trailer at the PlayStation Experience. If you saw that, look uh, Horizon Hor- Horizon Zero Dawn probably lo- is the best looking game coming out on the PlayStation Pro. Um, that they have confirmed that well they they said that the um the trailer was rendered on a PlayStation 4 Pro so no, if that's no, a standard one supposedly i don't know if it you know you know with these uh, game shows it's usually well, on a beefy pc well, it's, oh, well yeah even if it is on the PlayStation 4 Pro you still have to remember that this isn't like the full game running this is yeah. like a, a an early this is a pre-rendered optimized cinematic to be seen yeah so there is that to take into account. But the um, the funny thing, Guerrilla Games, the people who made Horizon Zero Dawn and the Decima Engine, who are also mm. quite famous for making the... Um, oh, what's it called? I've just forgotten it. It's that shooting game. Killzone. Killzone! That's the game. They made Killzone. They, they gave Kojima the source code in like a box... Um, of the uh, the Decima engine because he went around like the circuit looking at different um, engines to put his game oh, into, just, oh, right, and yeah. they gave him the code and he improved the lighting in the game and he gave it back to them. So there you go, I, I fixed that for you. <laughs> so that, I thought that was quite it's funny. Fixed. It just shows how Kojima's brilliance cannot be stopped by fuck you Konami. Yeah. So, um. Hashtag fuck no. Yeah, so that's that's what happened in Death Stranding. I'd love to see some gameplay, Kojima, because I'm very confused. I am very yeah, that'd confused. Be great. So if you if you could you could send an advanced copy to uh, in between podcast uh, at our PO box, uh, gmail.com. Podcast. That'll oh, be 
You can digitize it. Yeah, they'll just they'll send us a code. Well, they, they, they we'll, give, we'll give them the address and they can send us the PS4 Pro as well. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I want I want everything. So another game I thought was interesting for me personally was Dino Frontier. So this is a new PlayStation VR game, and it's actually made by the developers of Planetary Annihilation Uber Entertainment. Yeah, that's which I thought was made. really weird because I was like, these guys make Planetary Annihilation. Why are they making a PlayStation VR game? Yeah, I, I, I don't understand. I don't get it. Uber, what, what are you doing? So this isn't actually the first VR game they made. They actually made another one called Wayward Sky, which is a third-person adventure game uh, about reuniting a pilot with a kidnapped father. It's like a light puzzle-solving game that was meant to um, ease people into virtual reality. So you kind of have this, like, um, this third-person view where you can move your head around and you're not tied to a first-person view where you can kind of get a bit sick. Is, is this game on, the, on PlayStation as well? Yeah, this is on PlayStation VR, I believe. Okay. Now they've moved on to Dino Frontier, which is a settlement game with goddess hands, uh, reminiscent to black and white and those sort of games. Yeah. I always bring Peter up when we have these kind of games where you're acting yeah, as like a god character. Do. I always because... like to, I always like to c- c- compare Uber to Peter's... Uh... They seem to always try new things. They always, always try to be really ambitious, but they don't always get it yeah. correct. They don't always finish the things they start. They always remind me of Peter every time. Uber, don't Uber, do it, Peter. Don't do it, Peter. <laughs> um, yeah, but this... Milo yet. Well, all the money that we get from this podcast, if we do get some, is going towards hiring a PI to find Milo. We need to find out what happened. Well, we know what universe he's in now, thanks to the last episodes. But yeah. Wait, what, well, you, well what, you, what universe was he in? Inside? Was that what it's oh, called? yeah, the kid from Inside looks like Milo. <laughs> I, I need to finish that game to see what happens to Milo. Yeah, I want to happens to Milo as well. I need to get someone to buy that. I'll get Daniel to buy it, and then I can play it on his account. Anyway, oh, I see you to get on to front of you. Yeah. yeah. Now they move. Now they've moved on to Dino Frontier, which is a settlement game. Uh, I said that with Goddess Hands. You build like this frontier base, like um, cowboys, where you have to save your cowboys from eating uh, by dinosaurs, where you have to kind of build these bases. And there's not horses they ride on. Eventually you tame the dinosaurs and you get your um, your guys to ride on the dinosaurs. And it was really interesting to have this kind of game that just felt perfect for VR because it was like you kind of come in and you scoop up people and you kind of sort their lives out and micromanage them yeah. with your hands where you're kind of like a god game. I feel That's like usual. Uber, great idea. Can you do it properly though? Thank you. I, I feel like we're going to get a lot more... in uh, VR games are going to be a lot more these god games where you pick things up with your hands and you mm. kind of walk around and go, oh, look at the scale. And then <laughs> yeah. there's going to be more like turret-based shooting thing games. Those are going to be like the main games for VR that are going to come out. Um... Have you seen the Google Earth VR game? Because I was watching a giant bomb. Um, yeah, I've seen a little bit of it. I was watching a giant bomb play through that, and that actually looked really amazing. The Google Earth uh, VR experience. I want to try that out on the Vive because that actually looks really cool. Okay, I haven't looked at it properly, so I'll have to. Yeah, I'll have to try that at some point. Yeah. Uh, next was Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite got released. Apparently, this is a big fighting game. Me and Tony don't play fighting games, but. People really no. love this sort of stuff. It's a highly anticipated fighting game. Uh, there were rumours about there being no X Men in it, but I don't. That, I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, there was, apparently there was some sort of gem system. Don't know anything about that. Uh, the, there was a lack of assists, and it was more focused on the cinematic universe of Marvel than the comic book one. Yeah. So there's that. So Nak two. Nak two. Nak two. Got released. Need I say more? Nak two. Nak two is like, is is like a meme game to Dunkey as Sonic All Star Racing <laughs> Transformed is to me. I like you know the best game Nak, the Sonic All Star Racing Transformed as well. It's the main game. So oh, from what yeah. I could see, they've improved the couch co op, which I assume is offline co op only. I, I, is there online co op for Nak two? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? I mean, did the first game of Co-op? I've never played Nat. I don't think so. so. I don't think it had Co-op, did it? Or had Minor Co-op? Maybe. Well, Nat 1 was a game. Yeah. That's what I can tell you. Dino City was a game. As well as Nat. No, I don't need to be reminded of that. So, next one. Last of Us 2. 
was announced. So, Last of Us 1 was super hyped up, had its PS3 release and its re-release on PS4. Uh, super hyped up, people said it was a fantastic uh, I'm gonna say game. It's, uh, and I've never, I, I, two, Joe, I've never seen Last it. Season. I've Did never you know? played Last of Us, so... I've never played Last of Us either. I've seen a little bit. Well, that's why we need our PS4. Yeah. So we can get Last of Us. I know there's Mushroom Zombies. Mushroom Zombies. Yeah, I had those yeah. Mushroom Zombies. It looks interesting. Uh, Uncharted The Lost Legacy. This is the first standalone adventure in the Uncharted franchise, led by fan favourite Cla- uh, Chloe Fraser. So I've always wanted to play Uncharted as well. That's why we need our PlayStation. Oh, you, know, you never played them? No, I want to play Uncharted. There's a new Uncharted out with a standalone game. So, yeah. Um... There was a new Resident Evil trailer as well, Tony. The Biohazard yeah. Tape 3 trailer. And the most interesting thing about this is they announced an Xbox One in a PC demo on the 19th. So that's in four days from now. We're we'll recording this on Thursday, I'm uh, the 15th. And they've got full graphics options revealed for the PC version. So that's going to be really interesting to try out. Uh, I think it's I you it, can play it on Steam. So I find it odd that they've revealed that. Though. Like, did you not find that a bit weird? What? Like they've revealed that? Oh yeah, we're, we're looking into the PC stuff still. We we got graphics options. What what what's weird about it? Well, that we're revealing they... it before a demo in four days time. Obviously, it just came out. I think that's a really good TV thing. Yeah, I'd, no, I'd, I'd, really I'd, good, I'd be I'd but... be I'd be surprised that they're actually doing this and giving demos. Yeah, that's what I mean. And... They're surprised that they're doing this. Like it's not, that's not a normal thing for people no. to do. Is it? Oh, we're, 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 we're revealing the PC options. Well, when you have people like Bethesda making yeah. taking reviews back to day one, and that now this people really are actually good. giving out demos, and there's been huge de novo support removal from all these games. It seems like publishers and devs aren't are taking back some of the shit they're putting out there, which is nice to see. So it is nice. Yeah. Hats off to you. So Capcom, don't don't screw screw, screw this up. Yeah. Please. I mean, I, I like Resident Evil. I've played Resident Evil Five. I've not, have heard... you ever played Four? I love Four. Four's a fantastic yeah, game. Four is like super, super fantastic. I, th- I, I played. You know, I played Resident Evil Four on the Wii, and it was actually really good. I, I can see that. Yeah. The actual yeah. the the gun controls for Resident Evil Four actually make sense on the Wii. Yeah. Um. I played but on yeah, the I, 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 but... I, I've heard about Six, so I'm holding reservement. The most confusing thing for me was that I watched Scary Game Squad, the Jesse Cox yeah. ensemble of people playing through this, because I wanted to see what it was about. And I, scary, why have they you? turned it into this kind of first-person horror game? Is that just where the times are going? Are we I don't not? Because they showed in one of the screenshots, they showed you having a weapon. You have like a sort of a shotgun. Are we going more towards like the Resident Evil Four? I that's what I'm really hoping for. Game. I hope it's more Resident Evil Four than just straight up horror. Or... I'm definitely gonna play this trailer. Uh, the, the, this game, sorry, on the on the nineteenth, just to see, you know, what, what it's it about. Yeah. Uh, All time. So they right. also announced Let It Die, which is an interesting free to play rogue like hack and slash. I watched the trailer. And I was like, is this memes? Was it memes, Toby? <laughs> because they released it the day <laughs> after it was announced, and he was like, "Hello, um, I'm Uncle Death. I love you, Senpai." Yeah. And I think I fucking, know. I was like. This this character sounds like the Joker, and I was like, "That is actually Mark Hamill voicing." It actually is Mark. That's Hamill. actual wow. Mark Mark wow. Hamill. Okay, I think it's memes. I don't know. This is memes. It's is just it like memes? it's just like the Grim Reaper on a skateboard with goggles, and it looks like anime bullshit. But, but... but will we ever know though, Joe? That's the real question. Well, it's only on the PlayStation Four, so exactly. Sony send us a PS4. <laughs> I want to know what this is. It is. It, it looks interesting, but it, yeah, it is very. It's very like we, we know you're in a video game, and you know you're in a video game. Look yeah. at us, woo wee, a bit, woo wee. Look at a me. Bit too video game tropey, but yeah. it might still be good. Uh, so the final game was near Autonoma, which is the Squeenix and Platinum have come together to make an interesting hack and slash. So I saw Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, <laughs> In Mutants in Manhattan. I was going to say Out of the Shadows, but that was the other awful Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle game they made. Uh, they made. Oh, that wasn't by Platinum, but that was another awful Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game. Yeah, but I'm. So, I was so upset. I was so excited. It was a Platinum game. They've had such a good what record with making hack and slash games. They were making a hack and slash Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game by Platinum, and it was going to be co-op, and it was just bad. It was just an empty city of boring, repetitive combat with awful AI 
But Squeenix rep confirmed that the PC release will be the same day as the PS4 release, which will be March 7th uh, in North America and March 10th in Europe. So if you want to check out Neon Tonema, you put your faith back in Platinum. They're working with Squeenix, making an interesting hack and slash game. I'm definitely going to check out the reviews for that yeah, one and see this, what it's like. It looks interesting, though. Um, I don't know what's gonna, uh, how, how it's going to play out, but... I'm, I'm 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 interested in this as well. It was the same. It was the same. So all of this PlayStation experience at the same time as the Video Game Awards. Um, just quickly say like Overwatch won Game of the Year. I think that was <laughs> that was the highlight for me. Jeff Kaplan shouting out her, dicks out for Harambe in his acceptance <laughs> speech. Uh, and Kojima got a lifelong achievement award, which I think was much deserved after um, Konami fucked him in the last um, video game awards and had their lawyers present and wouldn't let him come. Yeah. So that that's, that's Konami. I actually, I actually watch... watched the... Uh, they, they, they do an eSports awards now, actually, which I thought was okay. Because I saw... Um, you know, we were talking about... This is, this is separate from it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah this, is, this isn't the same company. This yeah, is a completely yeah. different thing. This is UK-based, actually. Um, oh, is it UK? Okay. Well, they're sponsored by Now TV, which is like a... Uh, it's like an is Sky, Domino's. the English company, and Domino's. Um, and Domino's. Well, each each one had like a um, a different ad sponsor. It's, it's still very it's, it's 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 still very corporate, like the Video Game Awards <laughs> is. Uh, the esports it awards just, is just as uh, is just as much of an advertising excuse as the Video it, Game Awards. I, I thought we were like some sort of like future universe or where where, where every, advertising is everywhere. I thought that's where we were when I was watching it. The yeah. middle part of what I was watching. But it. I I saw like. Um, I saw like um, you know we, we, when we were talking about Doom, we saw Jay from the In Between Us with his completed yeah. at May channel. He was doing one of the awards, so it's nice to see him up there. I mm. do watch a lot of his uh, videos now. I think he's got quite a good channel on completed at May. Um, yeah, I think Tups was there as well. Speaking of people that are there, I think uh, some of the awards. I think oh, I'm a cute by one streamer of the year, which I thought was his acceptance <laughs> speech is one of the funniest things I've ever seen. He's like, wow. The Domino's Award for Streamer of the Year. I'm blown away. It's just like the most sarcastic thing it's ever. It's sarcasm is off the charts. And there's Good. another video of, of him opening up his award because he got mailed to it on, on stream. So he just opened it up and he's just like, it got me this little fucking award thing, man. <laughs> it was just great. I was just like, yeah. Uh, Richard Lewis won um, eSports Journalist of the... Uh, year, which I thought was pretty cool. He's, he does a lot of good work, mm. read a lot of his stuff, so I thought that was cool. So, the skin insanity continues, Toby. So you know how I love the skin insanity of CSGO. <laughs> yeah, great uh, name, the fucking, yeah. the stickers, the sprays, the the thousand pound knife skins. Oh, did it bring up some illegal gambling issues at some point as well? Yeah, I Tony, there's, there's gloves. Oh, there's God. glove skins. Oh. Just what we needed. 17 community design weapon finishes. Unlike previous cases, the possible special items in the glove case are all 24 all new gloves. Jesus wow. Christ, when will it stop with you, Val? I, I like the things in brackets on our little um, what, what is that? Oh I'm yeah, I, I, I was, so each each update's got an operation. I was like, this is operation hand job. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> So, what do you think of this, Tony? You think the skin insanity's gone too far? I'm glad Seems for making money. They're, they're like adding some. Making money. They're right. adding more music kits as well. Did, let's us not forget about the music kits that are in the game. Wish you have enough to buy it. Go for it, Valve. Just go for it. Uh, I I I have the Hotline Miami music kit in CS:GO. So, oh, updates nice. all the menu music and the end game music with that. So. What glove? What gloves do you? What want? glove skin am I gonna go for? <laughs> mm. Yeah, I don't really play do the care? game that much. Do, uh, do you look at your hands? I mean, if we got some like cool ass fingerless gloves, ooh. ooh. Do you remember when you thought fingerless gloves were cool, and then you were just like, "Oh my, my fingers are cold." <laughs> yeah, I and you're just like, "Why? Why did I get these?" It keeps your palms warm, which I've never felt were ever cold. Well, I think the palms are the worst part to keep warm because they always get sweaty. Yeah. That's what I mean. Like my palms don't get cold, my fingers do, and yet they've made gloves to. Well, my palms aren't. I think we knew the music kits and stuff was memes when they had a Darude, fucking oh, yeah, music yeah, yeah. kit, where he was trying to, 
do his brand new album and everyone's just like, nah, play, play Sandstorm. <laughs> I think he played at TwitchCon and he was like, yeah, it's my new stuff. And they're like, play Sandstorm. <laughs> it's like, oh God. So, everyone just knows, wants the memes. What? Do you think there's going to be more skins out of it? I, I, think, all, I don't think yes. they'll stop here. They've, no, they're making too much money. I think that, I think they themselves have been infected with the insanity. I'm all for being it. able to customize your character. I as much customization as you can add to a game, the better. I would it's say it's just the grind I don't like. But it's just the releasing it in paid crates, yeah, that you can only get through buying it. It's I mean, come on, man. I mean, like people are complaining about Overwatch being a fully priced game and then having microtransaction boxes but you can earn those boxes just by mm. playing the game you can't earn keys in CSGO you can kind of earn shitty a couple of crap skins once a week but it's like not mo- most of it's just from putting money more money than you yeah. you already paid for the game more money into the game well it's funny how it's it, I think it's still like one of the top selling games on Steam CSGO it's still really popular Probably. Um, yeah, and I think when when they had a VAC ban wave going out, CS:GO become one of became one of the most popular selling games on Steam because everyone got banned for cheating on CS:GO. So. Just buy it again. Well, now you can get your Operation Handjob skins, Toby. So watch out for that. <laughs> I know you'll be I'm on not... <laughs> you'll be on CS:GO top frag. If anyone doesn't know, Toby never plays multiplayer games, so he will not be on CS:GO. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Val, I'm not giving you any money. Well, apart from the money I've given you on Steam sales, but other than that, oh, wish I do wish the skin insanity would stop. Though. Well, I think I think people originally were asking for glove skins as a joke, and then Valve were like, oh. "People want glove skins. Let's make these." <laughs> right. Moving on to the next topic, razor skins. No, not sock skins. Not yet. <laughs> I'd actually love it if they released model skins like they had in Source. Yeah. Uh, where you can change your model. Like, I always use the Arctic Ops on T and the SAS on Counter Strike. It Those would are my be mains. nice if you could do that. But again, I don't want it to be in crates so you have to buy and things. I want it Why don't you just add it to the game? Yeah. They actually recently added um, improved uh, 3D sound for CSGO. Does that actually work? Yeah. Uh, well, I've heard mixed reviews. So I've heard one friend say, yeah, it's really good. And my other friend said, no, it's really bad. So. Oh. Well, I, I don't know. It. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it's, it's good. Right then, it's but it's right. got. It, it, if if it was on Steam right now, it would have mixed reviews. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So Razer OS VR is now supported on Steam. So you remember we were talking about Razer making a VR headset. Mm. They're they're weirdly making an open source VR headset where you're going to be able to mix and match it with any game sort of thing. And they even have their own sort of controller called the Razer Hydra Motion Controllers. Right, I just thought it was okay. so weird that Razer was making a VR headset and it was going to be open source. Yeah, it's not something you expect them to do, actually, is it? Because like... they're bundling these motion controllers with uh, Portal 2 as well. Mm. They they have like, a limited edition Portal 2, so you're going to play this with like the OS VR, Portal 2 and VR. There's I've played a lot of VR stuff, isn't there? I've played Portal and VR. I've played the Portal Stories Mel VR demo, and that's really fun. And the way they got around this sickness is by not actually using that many ports. I think if you actually played the real Portal first person in VR, oh, you'd be God, really yeah, sick. Yeah. Yeah, but the way Portal, if 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 you look at Portal Stories Mel VR, that's how you do Portal and VR correctly. Is this like more of like a teleport more than just a momentum thing? Yeah. So I don't think you can do momentum in VR. I don't think that's possible. There's a lot more puzzles based around the new mechanic of moving cubes through different... Yeah. Well, some, some walls can't have... You can't teleport through. Because usually the way you move around with the Vive controller is you teleport around places. Some yeah. some walls can't teleport around through. That's, 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 yeah, that's a good idea. That's and some walls can't have items going through them. So you have to kind of do these puzzles sort of thing. Mm. And it's quite... It is really interesting. But yeah... Razer VR, OS VR is now supported on Steam. Um, Dual- DualShock 4 actually recently got supported as well. We were talking about yeah. that earlier. It's officially on Steam now. Yeah, it's now officially on Steam. So I get my 
Um, they they wanted to do DualShock 4 first because it's actually the controller that's closest to the Steam controller and it's not natively supported by Steam. So mm, weird. It, the, yeah. the, the 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 difference between a Steam controller and a PS4 is actually not that different. They're actually quite very they're actually quite similar controllers. So they wanted to do that one first, and then they're probably going to move on to DualShock 3 uh, PS3 controllers, and then they'll move on to the like, Xbox supporting those on um, on the 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 Steam custom uh, button yeah, mapping yeah. things, which are really interesting. You're going to get a Steam controller, aren't you, Toby? I've ordered it. I've completely forgot about it until just now, actually. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm getting because it. Because I wanted, I was like, Toby, send it to my house. I'll try it out first, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and then you can have it. Because I'm actually really interested to try out the Steam it. controller. Well, you really want to play Sonic All Stories and Transformed. It's the only reason you bought a controller. <laughs> it's and not the only reason. No, yeah, it's the it's only an, reason you bought a controller. It's the main reason. And you really want to play Sonic All Stories and Transformed. And you didn't have a controller, and you were like, it would cost me about the same amount of money to buy a PlayStation 4 controller. Why don't I just get a Steam controller? Mm. So you went through and bought it, and I, I've, I've heard good things about it. And if you don't like the button map, well, it's quite easy to I change. Mean, originally, my biggest concern was like the on the left, like the not the not the not the D-pad. I can't remember what it looks like now. I'll track bring pad. up the Steam controller. Yeah, but like, yeah, the, the trackpad thing. Yeah. Like, I was concerned about how that would actually operate, like, how sensitive that would be and how you could actually use it. But after using it, like, the controllers with the, the Vive, I yeah, like, yeah, it's this, really this easy. Work. It's exactly the same thing. Um, it's where the, the D pad the, is. The Vive, the, the controller, and the trackpad on the Steam it, controller. It replaces, like, the right um, analog sticks. So I was, like, concerned that, oh, I won't be able to use, like, it won't be the same sort of feeling. Was, like, no, it was actually pretty really easy to use on the on the apparently it is it's a lot better for games with like mouse clicky in it for like yeah. skylines and sim and that sort of stuff i can see that yeah uh because there was that there was that video of them showing um the portal laboratories where they make all the physical steam links and steam controllers and oh yeah vibes and stuff that was quite mm. cool that was but, really yeah. good actually. yeah interesting I, to see. I, i'm interested to see how um razor's osvr is supported as on all the different platforms, I know Valve is very open with their support. I'd love to see a lot of other games that on VR come to um, different platforms like Steam. Like a, I want to try out the Batman VR. Apparently, it's quite short, and you pay full price for it. The Batman VR on PlayStation Four. Because I was watching a stream okay. of Yahtzee playing it, and um, yes, he put, he 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 said I I I actually got done. I paid full price for this, and it's it's quite short. It's like okay. a couple of first-person puzzles that you do. Right, okay. Uh, but yeah. That's a shame. That's okay. the final topic this week, because we don't want to go on too long. So, Toby's wish list. Shall we look through your wish list? See, see what shit Toby's put on this week. Why? You always insinuate there's shit on my wish list. What are you, what are you trying to say? Tony wants one shot. <laughs> one shot. One Shot is a surreal top-down puzzle adventure game with unique gameplay capabilities. You are a guide, a child through a mysterious world and a mission to restore its long dead son. The world knows you exist. It's an indie adventure casual great soundtrack for £6.29. It's on sale right now. It's yeah, I, around £7 usually. I kind of saw about like how awesome the, like, the lighting sort of effects were. Like... Uh, the fourth image kind of really sold it to me. I really like that the fourth image look of the. I'm like not the, sure uh, I like the art style. Personally. The red neon lights look sort I was of trying like... to watch the trailer, but it was loading quite slow. I'll, I'll try and watch the trailer. I don't you know. Want... Like, it just I don't know. Yeah, what, what, well, you put it on your wish list, Toby. So tell me, tell me what it is <laughs> you, you like about it so much that you put it on your prestigious I, I, wish I, list. I was in the mood for a puzzle adventure game, and this looked had interesting art style for me. I have no idea. I don't know. Who knows? I mean, the, the concept's okay. It's a bit tropey. It's like... It, it's post-apocalyptic, isn't it? Again. I hate the art style, personally. Do you? Wow. Yeah, That's well, strange. I mean, I mean the actual in-game art style. When they cut yeah. to, like, the pictures, those look okay, but... No, I like in-game art style as well. I, really like, I like both of them. It seems very much more adventure like very adventure sort of similar to like Legend of Zelda sort of gameplay but in this weird dystopian world yeah it looks like one of those like old JRPGs but without the JRPG element it's see I hate weird. JRPGs 
So, so you're immediately put off by the uh, the isometric view. I assume it's not isometric. No, view. I don't it's hate. I, I don't. I don't. I don't hate games with isometric views. Okay. I but mean, it's the, it's puzzle it, do, it doesn't look like interesting at all to me. Okay. Okay. I mean, I'm not really interested in puzzle adventure games. Yeah, I, I'm, so, I'm. Depending on what it is, like, I, I, they can be really good. They can be really bad. Let me look at the reviews. It's not very positive. But is it ga- apparently it's a game that doesn't shy away from breaking the fourth wall. It harnesses my love for games that mess with your head. Okay, well that took a change in a different direction. Apparently, it messes <laughs> with your head. See, a lot That's of the a lot of the pros for it are it's got a good story. It's ambient. It has a good you know soundtrack and art style. Oh. Redacted. Oh yeah, I saw I that one. Is it so a spoiler? Much. I think it's yeah. a spoiler. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll, oh, I'll just, I'll I'll just read, read, read that out on stream. I won't read that out. <laughs> the, the, the part where everyone gets shot by <laughs> Mr. Blobby just blew me away. It was a fantastic end to the game. It was Harry Hill all along. Harry Hill the... and Mr. Blobby came along and just destroyed everything. <laughs> right. Wow. Well, I'll, I'll pick another on game on your wish list. You I've seen you put Con Man on your wish list, Toby. The kind of the kind of the the world that everyone lives in now that they didn't make a firefly another oh, season yeah. of that yeah do you think it's weird that they put these these kind of films on steam they've only done a couple and it's always it's... these really weird one off films i think it's weird but i can see a use for it cuz i i know when they launched steam videos it was like they they announced all of the Leprechaun films were going to be on um, Steam, which if you don't know, it's the Warwick Davis series where he plays a Leprechaun. Oh, uh, okay. I, think I know that, that, I know that they, they're... it weird that Common has more seasons than Firefly. Yes, I do. I think it's... <laughs> well, it's season one and two. I haven't actually seen this because I knew this was getting kick-started. So it's not online, like on YouTube or anything, you have to buy this sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. I, it's how oh, much... Season, what? Okay, season two is currently more expensive than season one. I'm not... Well, sure. after after um, Serenity, I think that was the name of the final well, the, the film. Yeah, you, I don't know if they could do a sequel unless it was a prequel to that film. Because I don't want to... I don't want to spoil it, but... Yeah, I, yeah. Mr. Blobby kills everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's a great name for this this podcast. Mr. Mr. Blobby, Blobby kills, kills everyone. everyone. I've spoiled it. <laughs> <laughs> or just spoilers. Mr. Blobby kills everyone. Yeah, that's a good one. So I okay, can't. I'll read this out. As as Ray narrowly Alan uh, Tudak, of course, from Firefly, navigates the world of fan conventions with the surreal experience that go along with them. He tries to land a serious role that will win him the respect he so desperately craves. So he's kind of like, everyone knows him from this one this one um, sci-fi show. Of course, Firefly is the <laughs> yeah, parody yeah. here. And um, he's Not trying to get that. back into this serious movie yeah. business. It's yeah, got, it looks like it's got Nathan it. Fillion in it as, as well, of course. And is, is, that, is that there, Summer Glow? Yeah. yeah. So th- there's quite a lot of the original uh, Firefly uh, cast in it as well so it, it's a comedy it looks quite funny I, I'd definitely give it a watch Toby it's kind of my wish list actually I want to watch this <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't Wait, even was, click was on this for... Toby's wish list? I, I, I actually I actually thought I was only going to click on this for like a, a second but yeah it's kind of my wish list I want this I want to watch this it looks good Josh okay. wouldn't be he's not dead I was going to say he's, he's boring in his grave yeah but he's not I mean, dead so we may disagree on the greatest sci-fi show of all time Toby but <laughs> Firefly I is up there. Far- oh yeah, okay. When were they? Well, they could bring it back because he went through the wormhole. So <laughs> they c- they can bring Farscape back as I well. There's a remake of. Farscape, can we get sure. a new season of Farscape or Firefly? And anything else we want to shove in there? Uh, new season of Star Trek, maybe. Yeah, new season of Star Trek. Stargate had too many. Don't need any more Stargate. That can go away. Um, I don't know. Okay. Anything well. else for StarCraft, the uh, original series? Yeah, can we get StarCraft, the original? Do you know what I think would be great? If they made an original series of Overwatch, I think from yeah, what they've I, shown in the, in the cinematics, I think yeah, you can actually I'll make a really good TV series yeah, out of those Overwatch characters. 
What's filthy lurs? Lucre? Filthy oh, lucre? Is... <laughs> How do you pronounce that? I don't know. I filthy L U C R E is a tactical stealth heist game that gamers can play in a single player co op. Both split screen and online with 15 missions across five locations. There are 30 plus upgradable weapons and gadgets too. Dot dot dot. Dot 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 means sex. Um, so, sorry? Well, you know in, 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 in literature, dot 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 means sex. So. And then they dot dot dot. Well, I that's a very read, tongue in so cheek. I, I don't know much. Well, they, they've only given you half the description, and the description ends with dot dot dot, so. The upgradable weapons and gadgets lead to sex, is what I'm going to gonna assume okay. from filthy... Well, it's called filthy lookery, so... <laughs> you know. Tony, why is this on your wish list? Because it's like a game me and Andy would play. Yeah, I don't know. I, like, I quite like stealth games, but... You never play stealth games? What are you talking about? When was the last stealth game you played? Uh, Thief. I was when did you play day. that? Huh? Were you? Yeah, I was playing the Down other day, and before me. that was... um. Uh, Metal Gear Solid Five. It's it's like top down stealth. This actually looks really yeah. interesting. It does. It looks really good. I like the um the graphics. I like like the design and stuff and the game. And it's co op. Really it's online yeah. co op as well. Yeah. Indie action stealth. Oddly, co op isn't a popular tag for this. When did when did this come out? Lend oh, it, it came out four days ago. Yeah. Wow. This is why I haven't seen this. It looks really good. Yeah, I, I thought it looked good. It's forty percent off currently. Eight pounds fifty. Trying to get us a couple of copies. We're playing it tonight. Has any of our um? No, none of my creators that I'm oh. following have done anything on it. So I have to read the reviews. Fun stealth action game. Levels will have both primary and secondary objectives, along with a large wad of cash to steal. Go for the lot of, or choose to hightail it out before you get caught. So. Some people are play... saying it's boring and easy to exploit. Other people are saying it's not a well optimized game. I've um... played a lot of uh, Payday, Payday the Heist, mm. and Payday Two, and this looks like it could be the game for me if it's anything like that. Yeah, is that is the top right like cash like you get it, isn't it? Is that what that is? Or my so, uh, maybe I don't know. It's hard to tell from the screenshots. It doesn't. Yeah. Oh, it's got a pound sign on it, so it must be of cash. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to look where the pound sign is. It's not in front of it. And I was like, oh no, it's down in the, in the little box. Yeah, yeah, bottom left corner. Yeah. Yeah, this looks really good. I'd definitely check this out. It's a crossbow. Tony, this is on your wish list. Well done. <laughs> but what, I, you always, you always like, oh, I don't play this these kinds of games, and then they're on your wish list. No, I've come to realize I've played a lot of different types of games. I'm not. You just lie to yourself about them. I just lie. To I myself, never play yeah. platformers except <laughs> there's a hundred platformers on my wish list that I want to play. I also, re I while I was like, oh yeah, I don't, I don't like point and click games or puzzle games either. So, well, yeah, I throw that out the window as well. Whilst on that, um, I was going to say I don't like survivally list. build um, games, but I have like from the depths, oh. space engineers, and Minecraft. So you only so. play survival, yeah. <laughs> games. Well, I don't like any. I don't like any other ones though. So there is that. I mean, there's don't starve as well. Factorio, sort of like that, but not really. Um. Yeah. What other genres can I say? I don't play. I don't play fighting games, Joe. Yeah, I don't I do play own fighting them. games. I do own quite a few of them. You don't. You don't play RTS games, do you, Tony? Well, you, well, yeah, I do. Yeah, actually. you do. Yeah, that's <laughs> frank in you. You think you do, but I don't. Well, that's the end of Toby's Westlist. <laughs> and that's the end of the show, actually. I think we've come to a good point to end because we're, we've are we been going on for about an hour and a half almost. So that's a good time to cap it off. But to cap uh, it off, sorry. Danny Dyer tweet. Have we actually picked one beforehand? Or am I just going to grab one now? Uh, it's just, let's just grab one if you said Okay, it, so... It. Okay, so 2016, nut, nut of a year, roll on the 17, my 40th year on the planet, HRH, uh, HRH Dyer, winky face. Right. Nut, nut, no. nut, nut of a year. <laughs> what does HRH mean? Oh, because he's doing his his Royal Highness because of his, he's the oh, Earl of Essex. He's the Earl of Essex, yeah. Get off my land. Of course, cure. I'm going to like and retweet that. There you go, Danny. <laughs> Wow. God bless. Right.
Well, that's the end of the show, Tony, so you can cut this shit out. Goodbye. <laughs> You're going to plug yourself, Joe. Oh, yeah, I exist. <laughs> I exist. Tony doesn't exist. We we have an ending slide that I don't think you put on in, in editing in the last podcast. No. But we have an ending happen. slide with all the information. Vidme slash in between podcast. Uh, Twitter at Scorn2000 when I post all the updates. Uh, Tony doesn't exist. Get me. But all the information is up on screen this God time bless around. His Royal We're... Highness Dan- Daniel Dyer, the Earl of Essex. Yeah. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.